What's going on YouTube? Saharali here and I am finally making my wig cap tutorial. I'll do my best to explain how I make wig caps for art dolls and this includes everything from fashion doll customs to BJDs and share some tips for getting them to be nice and smooth against your doll's bald head. So let's start with the materials that you'll need. First, I use cling wrap to protect my dolls from the glue. I prefer cling wrap because it's super thin and it has a bit of stretch and it sticks to itself. So it tends to give me the least creases when placing it on the doll's head. Next, we need a stretchy fabric for the actual cap. I use a tool because it's thin, but you can use any fabric of your preference as long as it has at least a two-way stretch. This will allow you to manipulate the fabric to sit flat against the doll's head and avoid creases that can make your cap bumpy. Since this particular fabric has such large holes, I tend to use two layers and the difference in thickness is negligible. Third, we have elastic bands. In some instances, however, cotton thread is preferable. For example, my Mini Mermaid has the head circumference of about three centimeters, meaning elastics are just too large and too thick for her. Both of these items are used to bind the cling film and the fabric to the doll's head and hold everything in place when we're gluing. When it comes to elastics, I prefer the kind that are quite flat, as you can see here, and you want them to have a decent amount of stretch as they'll need to wrap around your doll's head at least twice. Fourth, you'll need scissors. As long as they're sharp, they'll do the trick. However, I recommend you get a pair of small scissors like this if you can, as they'll allow for better control when you're cutting around the smaller shapes. Fifth, but entirely optional, precision tweezers. I generally use these to position the elastic bands on the doll's head since sometimes my fingers just don't cut it. Sixth, graphite pencils. They're easy to use and erase, and you can also find them in colors if need be. So if you have trouble erasing the marks that you make, you'll be able to blend them in with your fibers. Next up is flat end synthetic brushes. For my wig caps, I use the absolute cheapest possible brushes I can find because fabric glue will inevitably cling to the fibers. Unless you're using some industrial strength cleaners, the glue residue will eventually build up and you will end up with brushes that are stiff and unusable like I'm showing here. So for wig caps, I would actually recommend choosing cheaper brushes over something higher quality. Finally, fabric glue. I personally use fabric glues because I can never deny the possibility that my doll will go for an underwater photo shoot and I don't want the wigs to fall apart. This specific glue isn't my personal recommendation as I'm still looking for one to replace my own favorite, but it's the closest thing I can find at the moment, so it's what I've been using. It has a consistency similar to white glue, and I prefer that to something like Fabri-Tac because it's much less unruly and it's easier to use with a brush. Now that you've gathered all your materials, let's begin making the actual wig cap. First, we need to protect our doll from the glue, and to do that, I squanch a large square of cling film over her head. I use an elastic band to hold it in place by putting the band over the doll's neck, crossing it at the back of the head, and placing it over the doll's ears, finally hooking it under the doll's nose. If your doll has a face up with eyelashes, I recommend you cut a slit into the cling film that will allow the eyelashes to poke through without them getting damaged. Similarly, if your doll has weird ears like mine, you can cut slits into the cling film at the tip of the ears to allow them to conform to the doll's head better. Next, I place a section of tool on the doll's head and secure it in place with a band. Now I take the time to stretch the fabric out and eliminate all of the wrinkles until the fabric conforms flat to the doll's head. Slits in the fabric can also be used here to help the fabric conform. This includes the eyes and the ears. I'll also use my tweezers to help make the elastic flat against the doll's head, since this gives us the most grip against the fabric and the best chance of nothing moving while we're placing the glue. Speaking of glue, that's what we're going to start doing. I'll pour just a little dollop of glue straight onto the doll's head and start spreading it, that way there's no waste. Really take your time working the glue into the fabric, into any holes or spaces your fabric might have gained by being stretched. We want to fill those holes with small layers of glue until they are essentially flat surfaces of glue. I will cover the doll's head once in a thin layer of glue, let that dry for several hours, and then repeat. With this particular fabric, I find four layers to be ideal. After that's completed, I will let the wig sit for 24 to 48 hours, depending on the weather, just to make sure the fabric will hold its shape and that the glue has properly cured. 
Once it's all dry, we can remove the band that's holding the fabric in place and then remove the cap from the head. It's okay if the plastic comes along with it. Mark where you want to cut, and this really depends on the style of wig and the sculpt of your doll's head. But just imagine your doll's hairline and follow that. I usually do notches in front of the ears to hang sideburns, but in this instance I didn't just because of how I'm planning to style her hair. And that's it, that's how I make wig caps. It's relatively simple, it just takes some time and a few good materials. I hope you found this video helpful and you're fruitful in your wig making endeavours. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Remember to drink some water and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!